Welcome to the first in a series of videos that I'm calling Transformer Concepts. Through these videos, I'll show you how I built this transformer here. And after they're all done, I'll list all the videos under a playlist by the same name. This first video is about the primary winding. And that's all I have wrapped around this one for now. Haven't put the secondary on it yet. But what I want us thinking about the primary is this. When I plug it in, the current will go down one wire, whip around here a bunch of times, and then out the other. It's just wire. It is AC, so it's going back and forward, back and forward. But it's kind of like a short circuit. Let me plug it in. We'll see what happens. Okay, it's humming. That's normal. And what I want us to do is see how much current is flowing on this. So I'll put my meter or ammeter around one of the wires. And here we have it. There's a decimal point in the middle. So it's just over two amps. But what is it that makes this, what could seem like a short circuit, only draw two amps? And to explain that, I'll set this one aside and use just a coil of wire over here. I've got 500 feet of number 12. And if I look in my code book, chapter nine, table eight, it tells me that a thousand feet of number 12, stranded, solid, coded, uncoded, is plus or minus two ohms. So if I have 500 feet here, it would stand to reason half the length, half the resistance. And here I have Ohm's law written out. If I'm going to apply 120 volts across that coil, if it has one ohm of resistance, you might think that it would draw 120 amps. Now let's check it out. This uh, meter auto senses between voltage and uh, resistance. So we'll see what we've got here. And there we have it, 0.9, close enough. Okay, I'm gonna put 120 volts across this. Oh, first of all, let me cap off my little pigtails here so I don't uh, shock myself. Let's plug it in. And it's humming too, that's normal. But let's see how, many, how much current is flowing here. And here again, a decimal point in the middle, 29.6 something, almost 30 uh, amps. I gotta unplug it quickly because my circuit isn't really rated for that. But when you learn about circuit breakers, fuses, you'll find that, well, it can hold it for a short period of time. But nonetheless, I had 30 amps flowing through here with one ohm of resistance, what you might have thought would draw 120. Let's go outside for a minute. Here I got 500 feet of number 12 wire, one end of it tied to my neutral here. I'm gonna unwind it all the way around this grass here and then take the other end tie it into the hot, turn on my switch, see how many amps flow. Tying the other end into the hot wire, and then I'm gonna put an amp meter on here. We're gonna see how many amps flow. Let's get this in focus for you, and I'll turn on my switch. Oh, 107 amps. Now it's starting to go down. My guess is it's because the wire is starting to get hot. So I best turn it off before we do any damage. But there we got more what we were expecting for current flow based on the resistance of the wire. Once we got the wire off the coil and all spread out, we got close to the 120 amps that we would expect from one ohm of resistance. So there's something else going on the coil. And what it is, is when I run AC through it, AC is constantly changing. And it's going one direction, then the other, back and forward. And what happens there is that changing nature of the current causes the magnetic field to expand and contract, expand the other way and contract. Just keep changing all the time. Now I have another video on what an inductor is, and that's pretty much what a transformer primary is, an inductor. And what happens with that changing magnetic field, when I push an AC through this thing, is that I, when the voltage is applied this direction, 
then it will create a counter electromotive force, CEMF or back voltage, pushing against the applied voltage. Basically, I have the conductor, I have the magnetic field, and that changing nature of the magnetic field provides the relative motion, which creates that voltage pushing back against the applied. So when we're dealing with AC, often change the letter R to something different. It could be XL, X sub C, could be Z, could be R. I'll just use ohms for now because voltage will always equal current times ohms. Sure, whether the wire was on the coil or laid out, there was one ohm of resistance. But there was also a certain amount, at 90 degree angle from it, of inductive reactance because it's in a coil. Those magnetic fields are working together when the wires are all wrapped up next to each other strengthening that back voltage. And that creates this resistance plus the XL, whatever its value. I could figure out the Henry's uh, of inductance in this coil and then take my two times pi times frequency times the, the value of the Henry's and get my inductive reactance. Or I could do this. I applied 120 volts to the coil and it gave me 30 amps flowing through there, which must mean that I had four ohms of total opposition. The opposition was made up of some resistance and some inductive reactance for a total of about four ohms of impedance. My total opposition is that hypotenuse. You could do Pythagoras backwards and figure out exactly what the inductive reactance on that coil was. But that's the primary winding of a transformer, basically an inductor. My next video, what I'm going to do is talk about putting a core in a transformer, putting metal down the middle or wrapping it around, seeing what happens.